Danger. Nitric acid and sulfuric acid are corrosive. Sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides are toxic. Don't try this at home, please. As Nurbridge so lovingly says, crushing your expectations. This is not cheaper than buying the acid. Welcome back everyone, so today we're going to make sulfuric acid by the chamber process. So here is a tunic flask with some water in it, and what we're going to do is bubble um, sulfur dioxide through it, and using nitric acid as an oxidizer, we're going to oxidize it into sulfuric acid. However, rather than just leaving the nitric acid to be wasted, we're going to regenerate it. And that's the magicalness of this process. And the name comes from the fact that it used to be done in a large lead chamber. So anyways, let's get on with this. So, to this water, I'm going to add some nitric acid. You can just use crude um, nitric acid you made by, like, hydrochloric acid and, um, the, like, copper and potassium nitrate. Or just bubble nitrogen dioxide through it, that works as well. And, yes, you could use hydrogen peroxide, but that's just boring, sort of. <laughs> yeah. So if you have hydrogen peroxide, you might as well just bubble the sulfur dioxide into hydrogen peroxide directly. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to start introducing sulfur dioxide. That generator flask there has some sodium metabisulfite in it, and also some hydrochloric acid, which generates sulfur dioxide. You can burn sulfur as well, that works. Basically, any source of sulfur dioxide will work for this. And we're going to turn on stirring. So... What we're doing here, like I said, is just reacting it, and as you can see, the nitric acid gets reduced to NO2. And I'm trying to recover this NO2 as best as I can by bubbling into water, and there's also an air pump in the system to add in more um, air to regenerate the nitric acid. And now, ideally, you would do this in a large flask, like a 1 liter flask with this tiny amount of liquid, so um, you regenerate as much of the nitric acid as possible. But in this case, I'm just going to use a small flask and bubble the NO2 into water and recover some of it that way. And now, ideally, you could use like that tall beaker in the left-hand corner you can see there, use something like that. But um, I couldn't seal it properly because I have stoppers for those, but they're made of wood, so yeah. Anyways, after adding all the SO2 in, uh, basically I just ran out, we're going to distill this to concentrate our acid down and recover nitric acid. So you can see the acid's already pretty syrupy, I would assume it's around, like, what, 30-40% possibly? So now we're gonna take this, and set up for distillation, and, yeah. So you can see there's some NO2, that's from nitric acid. And we're just gonna distill this, and we're gonna collect the distillate into this beaker. And, um, what I originally planned was to fractionate the acid so I'd collect water and swap out the receiver for nitric, but I just gave up on that. And with my luck, the flask cracked as well during heating, so, yeah. And, yes, that was the one I torched a bunch trying to make sulfur trioxide, so it was gonna happen eventually. Anyways, I swapped over to the two-neck flask, and we're just stowing along nicely. Boiling point's around 100 and no, 2 and there's some distillate coming over right now, but um, yeah, it's fairly slow because it's water, obviously. So anyways, after I distilled off pretty much as much as I could, the distillation rate became very slow, so I just sort of gave up on it. And um, this is some that distillation apparatus and just let the excess water boil off. And you can see the acids are pretty concentrated from the white fumes. So yeah. I disassembled the apparatus and just let the acid boil down further because it wasn't worth recovering anything else, like the nitric. And you can see it's boiling around 200 degrees, so fairly concentrated sulfuric acid. If you want, you could just distill this and get your azeotropic acid, but um, I didn't bother with that. So you can see the white fumes are a lot more dense now, and I'm just going to save it out as, as is. It's probably around like 60-70%. You can see the nasty acid fume, so do this in a well-ventilated place, obviously. Or, you know, don't do it at all. You can just buy sulfuric acid pretty cheaply in the US. And here's some, some of our distillate, and you can see I put in a piece of copper. And after a while, it started reacting, so we did recover some sulf um, nitric acid. And left over in the distilling pot, we're left with yeah, around 45 milliliters of fairly concentrated sulfuric acid. It doesn't char paper as fast as 98% does, but um, it certainly does eat itself, so it's probably 70-80%, which is very good for this. And you could concentrate further, like I said, but I just didn't bother. So now we're taking the secondary scrubber solution and distilling it down, 
and we got another 5 milliliters of acid. And that's how to make sulfuric acid by the chamber process. This is a pretty easy process and you could definitely scale it up. And yeah, see ya.